we're live. We will just wait for a few people to join. And in the meantime, you just have a nice view of outside my kitchen window. Oh, there's two people watching. We just wait for a couple of minutes to let people join, guys. And then... Hi, Kath. Add to Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Catherine. There you go. You, you right. take it right. Maisie is camera woman. Okay. Can you see me? So, hi, everybody. My name's Claire, and I'm otherwise known as Sister Pledge Cleans on Instagram. If you're not following me, please go onto Instagram and follow me. Um, I have been asked by Swan to just do this live today. Um, it's for charity. I put the links up all on my page and Swan have got the links up for that charity. Um, I don't do a lot of lives, I'll be honest. I don't know why they make me so anxious when I talk to the camera every day on Instagram. But here I am. Um, I have been asked to show you some of my Swan brand products because I rep for Swan and also to talk you through some of the cleaning of the products and maintenance so I thought I'd share some of my tips with you today and I'm going to start with my handheld cordless vacuum so if you want to come over to here and have a little look so I have the Power Plush cordless and I also have the Hyperclean cordless vacuum they're both fantastic and I've deliberately left this one really dirty so that you can see how I clean it. Um, if anybody has any questions whilst I'm doing this, please ask and Macy will read them out to me um, and I will just in the meantime waffle on and hopefully you'll follow along. So the Power Plush Cordless Vacuum Cleaner comes with two heads and that is why this one is actually my favorite cordless vacuum. And it comes with a hard floor head, which has a lovely velvet roller here. And this one is particularly good because I have two cats and a dog. Uh, and this picks up hairs and even fine fur bits of fluff um, from hard floors really well. So they both need cleaning. This is the head for the carpets and rugs in the house. And it is incredibly easy and simple to just swap them over. So I am going to show you why these need cleaning and how I do it. So, hang on one second. This comes off here and you can take this part out. And as you can see, it's covered in hair. That's blonde hair, isn't it? I know whose that is. That's Fee on my daughter. And I will just use a pair of scissors to cut this hair. But you can also get special tools for this job. And I will show you what that one looks like as well in a minute. This is a special tool for getting this sort of hair out. So either is fine, whatever you find easier. But you just get all the hair off because if you don't, if you don't do this regularly, you're going to find that your vacuum cleaner starts to struggle to spin around and it's not going to pick up as well. So just do this. It's actually quite satisfying. Let's get all that bit of hair off. And then inside the actual head I just use a little bit of warm soapy water on a cloth and then just wipe in there can you see that part just so it looks nice and clean again so obviously you don't you don't immerse this into water because that has lights it has headlights which are really good for getting underneath the sofa you can see exactly where you're going um, but you don't want those lights to break I always get this the wrong way around <laughs> there you go pop that back in and that bit is clean so I'm going to show you how I would do the other bit 
I'm going to be all fingers and thumbs. I knew I would be. It's because I'm on camera. Right. For this one. This comes off. There's a little key. This is this has like a little um, specially designed bit that you can lift this off. So that comes off and you can get this roller out here. Now you can actually wash that under your tap and just pop it on the radiator to dry. Um, it's completely washable, but can you see how lovely that velvet roller is? That picks up every little bit of dust from your hard floors. I will do exactly the same here and wipe the inside of the head. And it just keeps it running nicely and then that it doesn't need washing it's not that dirty but basically you just pop, pop it all back in ready to use again sometimes you get little bits of hair stuck in these wheels but um i'm fine okay so Let's move on to this. Make sure your pipe is clean. You can get, um, I have got this brilliant radiator brush called the Radiator Buddy, which is perfect for this. But any kind of long pipe cleaner style brush that you, you can use to just clean inside your tubes for your vacuum. Then for the actual Power Plush body, so easy to clean. You just take out this part here, that's your filter. And then this part comes off too. So you make sure that is all clean inside. Keep that part dry. But this part can be washed in warm soapy water. Any questions so far? Not at the moment. Not at the moment, okay. Hopefully you're following along okay. I'm just going to wipe that out, but you can just wash that under the tap. Same with the filter part. Pop that in. And then it's all ready to go. Oh, oh, it's ready to go. So let's put it together. I'll give you a little demonstration now of how this works. Somebody said, how long does the filter take to dry? Um, the filter is metal, so that take, that's literally, I, my, the thing came off, sorry. Because <laughs> I'm all fingers and thumbs. Um, you can dry it by hand with a tea towel and it's dry straight away. But you, you know, it's, yeah, very quick. Just one second, I'm all fingers and thumbs here. Right. <laughs> so I just use this like every day in between mopping and vacuuming like in between deep things and it's so much if somebody spills something Cheerios somebody said what's the battery life like is it quick to run out right well I would say the battery lasts a good 25 minutes um, it's really good um you, I can easily do a couple of rooms and downstairs and do the hall in 25 minutes. Um, and then I just permanently keep mine on charge. It comes with an actual mounting unit, so you can mount it in your kitchen next to a socket and just permanently have it on charge. And then it's always ready to go. That's my advice, is just keep it permanently plugged in, charging up. And then you 25 minutes is definitely how long it lasts. It's the same with the HyperClean as well. Um, the only difference between the two, um, the Hyperclean, I do get asked what's the difference between the Hyperclean and the Power Plush. The Hyperclean has one big head which does both fl hard floors and carpet and you flick a switch to alternate between the two. And it's definitely better if you have a lot of carpets in your house because it's got a bigger head. So you do use, you can clean quicker. Um, the Power Plush is my favourite because I've got a lot of laminate flooring and I use it downstairs in my kitchen all the time. 
because I've got four children and like I said the dogs and the cats and they're in and out all the time so my hallway this is definitely used at least once a day I would say more than that um, any more questions about the power flush uh, the other thing I do get asked a lot about the power flush is um, how heavy is it it's really lightweight and it's the same with the hyperclean um, now my mum actually has the hyperclean that I was gifted through Swan Brand um, and she loves it because it's so easy for her to get up and down the stairs with and um, she's yeah she's got all her friends to buy one as well because she's found it so useful any more questions about the power blush I can't think about anything else that I would probably be asked no I'm not seeing any more I do get asked a lot of questions about this cordless I honestly absolutely love it and I used to own um, a Dyson cordless I would never ever buy one again just purely because it was so heavy and you have to keep your finger on the trigger to keep it on all the time whereas with that one you don't and uh, yeah I, honestly I would say this is fantastic should we move on to the microwave? Yeah. So microwaves, this is one of Swan Brand's brand new Gatsby range of microwaves. Can you see my reflection in Can the... you see my reflection? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wondered what makes it strange. I wanted to see a reflection in the microwave. Yeah, this is from the Gatsby range. The Gatsby range is so pretty. It's, um, it's, Art Deco, black and gold, 1920s themed, um, and as you can see, incredibly shiny. That does pose some, some challenges cleaning wise, and I'll show you in a minute how I manage that. But as you can see, inside the microwave is huge, so you can get a very large plate of food in there, which <laughs> is good because we like our food in this We place. do. <laughs> um, so, love that microwave. How how do I clean a microwave? I don't bother with lemon juice. I don't bother with bowls of water or any of that. Um, my favourite thing to clean a microwave out is actually one of these, like a dishmatic sponge. And I will demonstrate why. Because it just easily gets under here. You know that you know the kids never put a lid on the tomato pasta sauce or their soup, do they? Or the baked beans, I know they're meant to. And you get all your curry and your tomato sauce splattered up here. That is so much. It saves your neck and your back when <laughs> trying to clean under there. So I will use one of those. If you want to um, eliminate smells, if you've cooked curry in the microwave, it can smell for days. Um, I use something like the dew, dew disinfectant. This is just electrolyzed water. That is all this is. So it's perfectly food safe. Um, and I would use that in the microwave. And this one is the super clean of the range. So that also gets rid of grease and dissolves dirt really easily. So I just put a couple of squirts of that in there and close the door. If somebody's cooked curry and it will get rid of odours, it's brilliant. For the, oh, let me just mention something else. I don't know if Maisie can get in here and have a, have a look at that there. That's called a waveguard. Um, try not to get that wet when you're cleaning. Try not to get cleaning products on it. Um, and if yours is looking a bit scorched, you can buy replacement ones really cheaply on the internet. But it is quite important to keep that dry if you can. Um, I've learned from past experience, I have had a couple of microwaves in the past break on me because I didn't keep that, I didn't know how to keep that um, clear. This type of cloth is fantastic for high gloss, um, things like this microwave. Sticky fingerprints. I just go over with this. This is a sponge cloth. Or you could just use any cloth that is designed for glass, any window cleaning cloth. And e-cloths are fantastic too. And it's great because it just gets rid of fingerprints, any kind of marks, dries completely street free, and um, you don't have to use any product on it. It's just water. That is all, all I use on that, nothing else. 
Any questions about microwaves or microwave cleaning? Just give it a minute. I'll give you a couple of minutes. <laughs> Shall we move on to the next thing? If, there, if you've still got questions, if you're catching up, you can always message me. My inbox is always open. Um, always message me on Instagram um, because I don't pick up Facebook messages, but message me any questions and I'm always happy to help. Um, this isn't something for the kitchen, but I thought it was worth showing you today. Um, this is a garment steamer. And the reason I wanted to show you this today is because um, it's one of my most used gadgets at the moment. Now a garment steamer isn't just for steaming your clothes, it's not just for getting rid of creases, although it is fantastic for that, obviously that's what it's designed for. It saves you getting the iron out and the ironing board basically. And I do do my children's school blazers with it. But I also use this every day um, when they come in from school and I do their shoes and their school bags with it because steam is one of the best disinfectant, antibacterial, antivirus killing things you can get. It's just steam and it will kill everything nasty. So I just do their shoes, I do their PE kits, I do their school bags. Quick blast with the steamer. Let me just show you this one. This is the Pro Steam, and it has a really powerful jet of steam, which is just great. And you don't actually have to hold that, you can click it into place. And mm -hmm. oh, aim it amazing. <laughs> but yeah, you just steam things, and then so, I actually leave that plugged in. Somebody there. said, um, Which do you prefer, this one or the pink one? Definitely this one. Um, this one has a bigger tank and it has got a turbo feature, so it's got extra boost of steam. So it's definitely more powerful and it lasts longer because you've got more water in the tank. So, any more questions about garment steaming? <laughs> A lot of people say, well, I'd just get the ironing board out, but I hate getting the ironing board out. I'm not a fan of ironing at all, I'm afraid. Yeah, you've never liked ironing. I've never liked ironing. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is brilliant. It's also good if you make your bed and um, you don't bother ironing it, but you just want to go over the pillowcases with the steamer, just so it looks, it gives it that ironed look without actually ironing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cheat. It's a little cheat. Every, everything, every, anybody asking questions? Um, is it good for getting creases out of bedding? Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, if your bedding is like 100% cotton or linen, um, you know, there's no getting around that it's going to need an iron. Um, but obviously, if you can put it on slightly damp, and then you can use your steamer on it, you've got more chance of the creases dropping out. But it's fantastic to take away with you as well. If you go on holiday or if you're going on a business trip and you, you know, you get your clothes out and you hang them up, we all know about putting them in the bathroom and switching the shower on so the steam drops the creases. But if you've got one of those, it just takes minutes and it's better than struggling with one of the rubbish hotel supplied irons and iron boards and what about curtains yes curtains it's great for curtains um it saves you having to get the curtains down and washing them every time you can steam them um we have we have cats so they go in and out of our curtains so i just give the <laughs> curtains a little steam every now and then um, if you have new curtains it will get the creases out so that they look really good quicker it's, it's good for all sorts. You can you even use it on your mattress because the other thing with this model uh, as opposed to the pink one is you can steam holding it that way whereas the pink model you have to hold it upright to actually steam. With this model you can hold it this way and steam vertically and horizontally as well. I actually do a lot of my clothes steaming on the bed so I'll lay a pair of jeans flat on the bed and I'll steam them on the bed, flip them over, do the other side. That's how I use it. Anybody else? I've got any questions. Don't want to sort of 
rush through it. No. Okay. Um, nope, I think. We'll go on to this. I'm not going to say a lot about this. Just, I just want to, I just want to show <laughs> off that I've been organised <laughs> enough to have dinner ready tonight. Um, this is a large six and a half litre slow cooker at Swan Dew. And we have a casserole in there at the moment. Um, I do a lot of vegetarian cookery and in this slow cooker we've done recently we've done curry we've done chili and we do a lot of casseroles um i can now turn this down actually i had it on high to give it a good boost but if you put it on the auto function you could prepare yourself a meal in the morning and you or you could even do it the night before and then in the morning before you go to work or go out for the day you could pop it on auto and when you come home You've got dinner ready. Swan Brand do a lot of um, slow cookers. So I just have to say this one is huge. It's absolutely huge. So we're, we're a big family. Um, so the six and a half litre one, you can see it's not even half full. Um, and that's enough to feed all of us. Um, so if you, I mean, if there's only one, one or two of you, they do much smaller ones that would be more suitable. Are they easy to clean? Yes, very easy to clean. This is um, ceramic here. So I just pop that in the sink and hot soapy water and a, and a sponge. I like the scrub daddy type of sponge. This is the best for that because it's slightly <laughs> abrasive. But any kind of kitchen sponge, literally that's all you need, hot soapy water. Um, how long would you cook your casserole in the slow cooker for? That one probably eight hours it can be if you have it on uh, very low it could be on all night it could be on all day it might you could be out at work 10 12 hours and it'd be fine if you want it done quicker whack it up to high and then it'll obviously cook a lot faster and the auto function it does it for you. It starts it off really hot, gets it going, and then it will automatically, after an hour, switch it down to low. Um, but yeah, it all depends on your time. So if you're thinking you've got a 12 hour shift, put it on, uh, put it on low um, and it'll be fine. What's your favorite dish? Oh, now you're asking. <laughs> favorite slow cooker dish probably has to be um, the chili that we did the other day. Uh, the reason I love the chilli is because you get two meals out of one chilli. Um, what we do is make one big vegetarian chilli, we make it with corn mints and we have our chilli the first night, we have it with the rice, we have the Doritos, don't we? We have sour cream and it's really lovely. But then when, what's left over, what we do the next day is we layer um, thinly sliced potatoes on the top of the chilli. Then we will put some a cream or half fat creme fraiche if, you, if you're watching your weight mm -hmm. and some grated cheese and we put it back in the oven and that makes um, a chilli hot pot and it is, it's delicious. And so we can keep it on while you're at work? Yes, it's perfectly safe to leave on. It's just a very low current electricity and it's safe to use and that's exactly what it's for really. You could put a whole joint in there if you eat meat you could put chicken in there people have even done desserts we, it's one thing we've never done is desserts but people make fudge in them there's some amazing recipes um and tiktok tiktok got a bit of a craze for um slow cooker recipes if you search the hashtag slow cooker on tiktok you'll see loads of people making really unusual things with it so i don't think i even use it to its full potential if I'm honest <laughs> I think there's so much you could do with slow cooker um someone said what's your favorite swan product oh right so it has to be either there's two no there's three <laughs> am, I, am I allowed to pick more than one? Oh, I'd <laughs> try and say your favorite <laughs> um okay it's got to be the milk proper because I use it every single day, I really, it has transformed <laughs> how I drink coffee. It saved me a fortune in Costa with lattes and cappuccinos. It has to be that. 
but the close runners up are the egg the egg boiler absolutely love the egg boiler and poacher um again that is out all the time shall i show you the egg boiler and poacher yeah sure. i wasn't going to demonstrate this today but i'm, I'm not going to demonstrate it well, this is the egg boiler and poacher <laughs> so you can see it's well used it really is well used um and we oh where's the poachy bit is it so, even there? I don't even know where that poachy bit's gone. Hang on, it's here. That's <laughs> the poachy bit. So you can crack three eggs in there and poach. And you can also boil, soft boil or hard boil. And the good thing about that is um, you don't have to watch a boiling pan of water. Um, I have spoke a little bit about this before, but... Um, Maisie, who's holding the camera, has got a couple of, um, well, I don't know how to put it really. I don't want to give away all your personal details, <laughs> but she can't use, she can't lift very hot pans of boiling water. A lot of people can't if you've got a weakness in your wrist or what have you. So that's perfect. So it's a lot safer for her to use. And you don't have to, yeah, you don't have to set the timer or anything. It does it all for you. So I do, I absolutely love the egg boiler. And then third, it's got to be the um, power plush. I mm -hmm. couldn't live without the power plush now. Mm -hmm. I literally couldn't. Because I hate getting the big vacuum out, getting the cord out. And um, it just seems a bit of a faff, doesn't it? When you mm -hmm. see a crumb, some crumbs on the floor, I can just, yeah, just it's so easy. So, yeah. Any more questions about that? Mm. No, I don't. I think so. Okay. Should we move on? Yeah, let's to move. The sink. I get a lot of questions about this sink. Um, have a look at the view from my kitchen window as well. What do you think? I absolutely love this part of my kitchen. It's like the best view of the mountain in front of me. I absolutely love it. So this sink here and um, this house that i'm in is a rented house so i didn't choose this sink uh, and it's a black composite sink so i do get a lot of questions about how to keep this clean and how to keep it free from water marks because um, we are actually in a soft water area so don't have a massive problem with white water marks um, but i just wanted to share a couple of things with you about this sink i clean this sink just with hot soapy water again i'd use the um dishmatic sponge let me just grab that again these are the products i, I use so this will disinfect and kill grease kill grease <laughs> get rid of grease and the same with the dishmatic sponge so it's a really gentle washing up liquid is just so gentle um so i'll go over it with the hot soapy water I'll wipe it all down and then dry it. And then my top tip is to use um, coconut oil. Just ordinary coconut oil. We buy it from uh, Aldi's. It's about three or four pounds. Just where the olive oil is. It's like a solid oil. And you just get a microfiber cloth. And you just buff it into your sink. And it will shine. And it protects it from watermarks and staining for about a week. So I do that every week once a week and it keeps it really looking good the other thing i would definitely recommend if you do have problems with staining uh, with lime scale on your draining board is to get a dish drainer that has a tray and this one is a swan brand dish drainer and this catches all the water and it totally saves my draining board from getting stained. So those are my top tips for a black composite sink. Somebody said it looks fab, the dish rack. It really is good. And do you know what? At first, when I first got it, I thought that is not going to be big enough for holding all our family's dishes. I mean, we do have a dishwasher, um, but it, it really is. It's amazing. You can get a full dinner set on there. <laughs> And your glasses. Let me find a glass and just demonstrate. Your glasses all sort of pop on the end like that. So there is masses of room. And this comes off easily for washing as well. 
You can actually pop that part in the dishwasher to give it a really deep clean if you want that to be your, for your cutlery. Um, so yeah, I love it. Yeah, and someone else said it's so easy to clean. It is really easy to clean, yeah. It is, it's brilliant because you can just put that tray in under some hot water and it's done. Um, absolutely love it. So, it's actually quite insta-famous, this dish wrap. <laughs> I think a lot of um, cleaning influence actually have that exact one. So, when they are in stock, they usually fly out and then they sell out really quickly. So... If you do see them in stock, definitely you should snap one up. Okay, should we go on to the toaster? Yes. Now, I showed you my lovely Gatsby Range microwave, which is over there. This is the matching toaster that goes with it. I have the toaster and I have the kettle as well. And they're both from the Swan brand Gatsby Range. As you can see, very Art Deco. Black and gold, I absolutely have, I love at the moment. Um, toaster, it's a four slice toaster, and it has the bagel setting. A lot of people really like the bagel setting. I can't say we use it, but there's also a defrost setting and a reheat setting, so it's really, really good. Um, it's super shiny, again, like I said, I'm gonna grab the cloth that I use for this. The sponge cloth, absolutely fantastic. Again, or you could use a glass cloth, but that is how I keep that free from fingerprints. And then to empty it, with your toaster, you should always keep the crumb trays clear. So mine will be full, because I've left it purposefully to show you. So <laughs> always keep the crumb tray free of crumbs. Um, I should throw these out with the birds, really, but um, I, will, I will do that later. But yeah, I don't like throwing them away because the birds are really hungry at the moment. So we'll give, put those outside. But yeah, it has two crumb trays, so they're very easy to pull out and keep clean. Every now and then, tip the whole thing upside down into your sink as well and empty it out. That way it saves your worktop getting covered in crumbs that's another thing that gets used all the time in our kitchen how are we getting on anybody want to ask any questions um what's your favorite swan range favorite swan range um it has to be the gatsby range and um, i love the retro range that that one was my absolute favorite because i really love retro um but the Gatsby range has definitely um, won me over. I, I just absolutely love the gold. But the, there are so many. There's, um, which is the range that Nana has? My mum has got um, mm. the Nordic range. The Nordic range is beautiful. My mum has the Nordic range with the wooden, like wooden handles on everything. Really good. But I just like a bit of shine and sparkle. So I was, I was, I promised Swan that I would make a mocha coffee. So I've just switched the coffee machine on to show you. I'll probably mess this up. <laughs> I make, I make coffee all the time. I honestly could get a job in Costa, couldn't I, Maisie? <laughs> yeah. I could get a, a job in Costa, but um, this is the, this is the milk frother as well. This is like one of the best selling items that Swan do um, and that has transformed our we have this whole little hot drink station thing going on now and I've got a cupboard full of oval tea milkshakes everything so um, my family are just we just love our cozy nights in front of the telly with a hot chocolate don't we or Ooh, yeah. a, a milkshake um, and actually um, Pop is the first thing Poppy will say when she comes home from school that she wants a milkshake. Um, so what I thought I'd do is demonstrate both. Um, if the coffee machine is heated up, I've got a nice Christmas mug out. <laughs> Has everyone got their Christmas trees up yet? We've got ours up early. <laughs> Why not? 2020 has been an absolute rubbish year so i just think 
why not? If you want your tree up early, put it up early. Um, can you make a double espresso with the coffee machine? You can. You can actually. The um, so that's the part where you put your coffee in. So I always use that. You get two different. What's that bit called? I don't know what it's called. I'm sorry. <laughs> But you can either put a double shot in there or a single shot. So you get two of those disky things. I'm giving you like, that's the actual technical name for it, disky thing. Um, but yeah, that's the double one. So you can make a double one or a single. So you can choose the strength of your coffee. So that you get, this comes with machines as well. That's your coffee scoop. You don't use any pods with it. So it's not like the Nespresso or the Tassimo. Um, where I think there's an awful lot of plastic waste when you buy those pod machines. This is better, you just buy loose ground coffee. I just buy it from Aldi, to be honest. It's not a posh brand of coffee and it tastes amazing. And you just put however much coffee you like in. I'll just put one scoop in. Because it's a double one, you could put more in. So you can see I've put one in and I just flatten it down like that, and that's your coffee, that is all you have to do. Let's pop that there. Now, the only thing, it does, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just getting tongue-tied here now. Um, you can put your shot in your small mug, but the big mug, can sometimes struggle to go underneath so I have to take that you can take that part out and put your coffee mug under or you can just use a small cup and measure out that's what we're trying to say <laughs> so for a mocha we have a shot of would you pressure. recommend this type of coffee machine over the pod coffee machine for flavor yes definitely um I'm not a coffee expert, but yeah, I think I definitely think so. And it's the, the cost of it as well is so much cheaper to do it this way. And let me just show you the how do you pronounce this? La creme, la crema, crema. <laughs> I, I don't know, but have a look at this. So there's your creamy top. That's how lovely. Somebody will tell me what that's called. I'm not entirely sure. But I'm going to pop that in there. And I'm going to pop the steam function on. I'm going to steam some milk in a moment to go with that. So I'm going to add some chocolate. Spoonful of hot chocolate, drinking chocolate. I'm just waiting for this. Um, yellow light to come on that will tell me that the steam function is working ready to go now i um descaled this coffee machine this morning and i did film the whole thing so i'll be uploading a video later uh, onto my instagram so yeah that's just oh, right. it's just cleaning it like that um yeah so if you want to know how to descale it if you live in a hard water area you do need to descale coffee machines um, but you could just use bottled water and then you never need to descale it ever. Um, but I did a video earlier, um, so you can watch how to do that. I'm just going to blast a little bit of the, there will be water in the system, which I don't want in my milk. So I'm just going to get that out. And I have milk in here. You can use any milk. Um, you can use oat milk. Oat milk is brilliant if you don't like cow's milk. And then you just turn it, you pop it, the nozzle in, and you just turn it gradually. Any questions? also heat in the milk. I like this little um, metal jug because you can feel how hot it is. It smells nice as well. Does it? Yeah. Right, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Okay, so there's your hot frothed milk. Apparently you meant to bang it on the, on the side to get the air bubbles out. <laughs> so I'll 
look like I know what I'm doing. I really don't. How long does it take to heat the milk? That was literally a minute, maybe less than a minute. So there's, there was about 120 ml of milk in there and it filled it. It frothed it up to 350 ml, so it like trebled in size. And then all I would do is just get a cloth and wipe the nozzle to keep that clean. And there is your mocha. Now you could be fancy and stick um, a flake in there, a bit of squirty cream maybe. <laughs> Shall I make a hot chocolate with the milk frother? Shall I do that as well? And then you can see the sort of how the milk frother works. Um, is the steamer easy to clean and what would you recommend cleaning it with? Right, so yes, the steamer is easy to clean. What you would do after you've used it, really, you should just blast a bit of steam through it like that. That's all you do after you've finished with the machine and it's that will clean it through inside. This part here comes off for cleaning. So, I don't know how hot that is, but yeah, it's a bit hot. There's the nozzle that comes off. You can just soak that in some water and you just wipe the whole thing down with a cloth. And um, to clean the actual coffee machine, there's a tank at the back. Let me show you. So that is your water tank here. And you can either use citric acid, which is really cheap. I buy it from Wilkinson's. Or you can use white vinegar um, and you just dilute it sort of one part white vinegar to um, four parts water. And you can flush all the machine through with that to descale it. That's how you would keep that clean. It's incredibly easy. I'm going to show you the milk frother. I'm going to make a hot chocolate. Okay, so your milk frother, if you get one of these, comes with two attachments. That is the whisk, and that would make you really, really frothy milk, hot or cold. It does both. Um, and if you use the, the whisk, you only need to put a little bit of milk into this machine. And there is a, there's a line inside, a guideline that says where you fill minimum and maximum for each attachment. The attachments store in the lid, which is really handy because then you don't lose it. And then you have another attachment inside here. This little one here is just a stirrer and they just fit on the bottom there. So I would use the stirrer for hot chocolate um, and I would use the whisk for frothy milk for like lattes or cappuccinos, that kind of thing. If you use the whisk with too much milk, it's just, you end up with um, foam all over your worktop. <laughs> so don't make that mistake, because I've done that before. So to make hot chocolate, so easy, even my kids just do this. even put a bit more milk in that if I wanted to. Um, put about four, three or four spoonfuls in of hot chocolate. Now the best hot chocolate isn't actually the Cadbury's one. The best one for this is the Galaxy, the Galaxy do an extra frothy one and it's, it's lovely. It is that's my favourite hot chocolate, but we've run out. So we're using Cadbury's, it's still not too shoddy, is it? <laughs> so, pop the lid on, and all you do is press the button once, and you have to make sure that the hot, the red and the blue are both lit up to have a hot drink. If you want a cold drink, you just hold the button a little bit longer, and just the blue light comes on, and that's how you get your hot, um, your milkshakes. So we will have our chocolate.
put it in there. Any questions? I'm going to have to have a sip of this. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. That is so good. And we've really got into buying like all the syrups, you know, like the gingerbread. And what else have we had? Um, caramel. Yeah. Um. You do get really like into making your hot drinks. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm just <laughs> Helps to have like a mince pie or a cake as well. But again, um, just to sort of say Maisie uses this machine because it doesn't get to boiling point. So a lot of people also say to me, this isn't hot enough for me. If you want a really, really hot drink, you need to just blast it in the microwave for 30 seconds. Um, this will do this at perfect temperature for coffee. That's really what it's designed for. It's flashing so it's finished. So let me show you. So that's not hot, see? So I can't scold myself with that. And it's obviously I've not got, I could have put more in there. But that is a perfectly whisked cup of coffee. You could put some squirty cream on there. Um, but yeah, heat wise, with coffee, you can't add boiling milk to a coffee because it'll spoil the taste. So that's why that's designed to um, only go to a certain temperature. But it's perfect for kids because it's, it's ready to drink straight away, isn't it? You know, it's. I'm just going to grab a cloth now and show you. What is your favourite syrup? Ooh. Um, yeah, it probably is the gingerbread. Yeah, gingerbread. If I just wipe this out after I've used it, so you can see it's really easy to clean. Um, you will sometimes get, if you use it for several drinks, you'll get a little, the skin, you know, with, with milk. If you heat milk, you'll get a little skin on the bottom, which is fine. It just comes out, just use a bit of kitchen milk. And that's all there is to it. But you, I could have made a lot more hot chocolate there. I only made half a cup there because that's that's all the milk I had left in that jug. <laughs> but you can make a mug full of hot chocolate. And if you wanted it extra frothy, shall I demonstrate a bit of froth? Uh, yeah, do a bit so of froth. And I don't time. know how to check the time. Oh, right, hold on. Let me check the time. Oh, we're right for five minutes. Okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll demonstrate froth. This is full cream milk I'm using here. So swapping over, putting the whisk in. Does the coffee machine come in other colours? Oh, it certainly does. <laughs> um, the coffee machine comes in um, like blue, orange, pink. They're not always available. Um, the grey is available, I think, at the moment, and the blue. I'm not entirely sure, you would have to check. But yeah, Swan Retro Range is so brightly coloured, it's brilliant. The, I love the orange, but it just wouldn't go in my kitchen. Oh, I love the sound red, of some of them. <laughs> they do it in red. Right, so I'm going to add the milk to the, this is the whisk. So we only add this to the lower line, because if we, if we went too far, we would literally have a foam party. So we're going to whisk that milk up now. And that, we'll, um, we can top that hot chocolate and then Maisie can drink that when we go off live. <laughs> <laughs> but you can buy um, milk frothers. I can't think of the name, but there is a really expensive brand. It's like £100 and you add all your grated chocolate to Oh, that, I think that's that like hotel chocolate. Hotel chocolate. chocolate. It's yeah. so expensive, whereas this... Just exactly the same thing, and I've had this one over a year now, and it's so quiet as well. It probably takes about one and a half minutes. So yeah, well, that's all. It's not long, is it? No. <laughs> but you could put Ovaltine in there too, or Horlicks if you like Horlicks. 
it's really it's really good we literally use this like three four times a day don't we yeah has anybody got any more questions you'd like to ask it's finished mm. right look at the look at the froth <laughs> on that Ooh. tap it a few times look at that how gorgeous is that? That's Look, so I can't even get it all in the mug. That is just perfect. <laughs> Probably should have chosen a bigger mug. I should definitely <laughs> have chosen a bigger mug. But yeah, so I just wanted to demonstrate that. So you could, if you didn't have a coffee machine, you could just make a coffee up in your cafetiere and you could make up your cappuccinos and your lattes just, just using the milk frother. So it is that easy and it's because it's so neat and compact, you can just store it away in your kitchen cupboard as well. You don't have to have it out on the worktop all the time. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love that. It has to be my favourite product. Any more questions before um, we go? Let me have a look. I'm going to go and pick my children up from school in a moment. Um, who does the Alice charity help? It helps disadvantaged and vulnerable children in um, Edinburgh, I think, Tyneside, up, that, up north, up north. <laughs> but yeah, it helps dis disadvantaged and vulnerable families that need support. Um, they give every, like they give debt advice for free. They help out with food. They help out with um, supplies that children might need. Um, school uniforms, domestic violence advice, they are a fantastic charity. So um, there is a Just Giving link. Um, it's on my um, Instagram page. I put a swipe up to that. And it's also on Swan Brands, both their Facebook page and their Instagram page. So please go and have a look at their charity and give them some support. And even if you can't donate anything, if you can just share um, their, you know, their charity, it just helps massively. So it's, yeah. Any more questions? I hope I've um, not waffled too much. <laughs> I'm sure I have a bit. There was me worrying that I wouldn't have enough to say. And I've waffled on for about nearly an hour. I think we'll probably say goodbye. Anybody watching this after we've logged off, um, I think Swan will save the live so you can watch it back. And any questions, please um, pop over and ask me anything you want about anything I've talked about today or any of the other Swan products. If I can help, I will. I just want to say thank you for joining me then. And I'm going to say goodbye and thank you for watching. So goodbye.